Intrepid Readers! It is 2017. Can you believe it? I cannot believe it. And I am doing my first video for my first blog of 2017, which is very exciting. I'm super excited. I hope you are too. So today's blog, well, last weekend's blog that I'm now doing on video was called The Mystery of Sacrifice. And it sort of relates to the blog I did before about, um, see now I can't even remember what that blog was called. Anyway, this one is related to that one. <laughs> you can go back and reread some and figure out what I can't figure out right now. So anyway, The Mystery of Sacrifice is based on what things, what do you think you, oh, it was about being a hero. That's right. Uh, could you be a hero for someone else if the situation called for it? So now it's like, what would you do for another person? And what does the relationship have to be with that person for you to make a super sacrifice? Okay. Um, because we all, uh, not all of us, but most people I know who are parents, for example, say that they would give their lives for their to save the lives of their children, no question, at the drop of a hat. But what about just saving the life of somebody else that you are just friends with? Or maybe just like a distant cousin? Or what if it's just some Joe Schmo walking down the street that you don't even know? That's the question. And, and it sort of relates to what's the... I mean, what is your ultimate take on the value of human life as a whole? Do you think that it's... And then who deserves it? Who deserves to be... See, it's tricky, tricky, sticky, sticky stuff. I got the idea from this blog from a show that I talked about before that I think has been canceled already, Ugh, which stinks. But anyway, Pure Genius is the show. Remember about the tech giant who forms a hospital with the biggest technological advancements possible to be constantly trying to save more lives and with more medical um, advancements. I've already said that, I know. But anyway, so that's the show. And there was an episode that made me think of this and touched me, touched me pretty deeply. So I'll explain it to you and then I will ask you the questions that I want you to think about. All right, so... In this episode, you have the main visiting character is a daughter. Her mother ha has kidney, a kidney issue. Her kidney is shutting down. There are no matches uh, for a transplant for this mother. And so she's at the Bunker Hill Hospital because they're going to try and do something fantastic and magical with technology to save her kidney. But they, they don't really have that. They can't really do it. So the daughter's kidney doesn't match, right? And then the caveat to the story is that the daughter is a prima ballerina. And she's just received the opportunity to go to Paris and be a part of the Paris Ballet. Which is, if you know anything about ballet, that's, you know, humongous. The, the Moscow Ballet, the Paris Ballet, the New York Ballet, those are all very important things. And so she has this big opportunity. So she's bringing her mother to Bunker Hill to see if they can save her life. And see something comes up on my computer that I don't care about. Click. Gone. <clears throat> anyway, so we get to Bunker Hill. The technological advancement that they are going to take advantage of at this time is called a kidney pairing exponential. So the concept is sick person A... And donor A are together. All right, so it's turned out to be um, to do this kidney pairing. They, the Bunker Hill people, put out feelers globally to find a match for this girl's mother. All right, and so the girl and her mother are donor sick person A and donor A. All right, so the daughter can give her kidney to the organization and then they can match it with somebody across the globe who happens to be a match for the mother. 
that's the concept. It's been used before, I guess. But this is like a bigger they the way that they the way that it worked is they um, find the donor sick person A and donor A match it with sick person B donor B and then it goes all the way up to H donor C D E F H um, to turn it into like a chain. So does that make sense? So um, the main character who is donor A gets matched over here with uh, sick person G. Whereas donor C is the one that matches with sick person A, her mother. And so it has to work as this chain. Now the chain, uh, there, there comes to be, there are several problems with the chain. I'm not going to tell you all of them because I want you to watch the show. But anyway, what it turns out happening is the mother is too sick to get the transplant. I think that was the way it went. Anyway, the, the kidney, the transplant isn't going to work for the mother. The mother's going to die anyway. So the daughter, who has been taken into this chain to help save her mother, is now going to, there are seven other people in the chain who are going to die if this uh, donor A over here breaks the chain. So just imagine this for a second. The daughter has a mother, this chain's not going to save her, plus she needs to go to Paris for this lifetime opportunity that she may never have again. But if she does break the chain, that screws up the seven other people as well. So what would you do? That's my question. That was the question that she was asked. That's the dilemma that she faced in the show. Now imagine for a minute, they don't know who is getting whose kidney. So what if her kidney was going to like this amazing, precocious prodigy of a 10-year-old boy? Or what if the kidney is going to this South African racist, misogynistic asshole? Okay, so that goes to the who deserves it and who doesn't. And how do you decide and what gives you the right to decide or not to decide, I guess. So I don't know. The question is she promised her kidney to the chain. Situations changed. Her mother felt she should go pursue the ballet option and that she didn't have a responsibility to the chain, which I get. She also felt a responsibility to the chain. What do you think about that? Because she had promised it before, what do you think about that? And I don't know. Like... If I, I feel, I feel like most of you do, I think, that I would sacrifice myself for my loved ones, but then for just anyone, because people deserve to live. Every, I think that's true. People deserve to live. Most, most people, a lot of people deserve to live. And that's a whole nother blog we could talk about, you know. What's your opinion on who deserves to live? Charles Manson's really sick right now. Does anybody care? I don't think so. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's such a, it's so hard. It's such a dilemma. And I just keep, want to keep talking about it, which is why the blogs keep coming about these bizarro topics. So, um, you know, send me an email on YouTube or on my website if you have an opinion and let me know what you think. See, can you tell I'm looking down because I'm trying to find the little button? Yes, to push. Anyway, I hope you've got great resolutions or no resolutions and that makes you happy too. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. I hope you're excited for um, doing what we can to make this year great. And oh God, I don't even like that adjective anymore. Fantastic. A fantastic 2017. And... Um, I would love to hear your views. So until next time, stay mystified.